So, the potential world champions versus LNG. Now, this is quite interesting and uh, drafting style, though. We can already see it's kind of uh, more objective focus already. Taking an Olaf B1 when Olaf is... He's not too bad right now, but he's definitely not a uh, contested pick, should I say. So, it's very interesting that they prioritize the B1, but it does give Tarzan the ability to just completely take over the game. So... And obviously, since the smite changes, Olaf did become a little bit better due to the fact that you know you can't uh, can't really out smite an Olaf anymore. We get the response with the virus. Maybe they pick up something priority for Scout. I don't know their drafting scout style entirely, so maybe they'll pick up maybe like a Syndra or something here. And I think Scout plays Syndra very very well. Or maybe they'll just go with. Um, Maybe a top laner here. Maybe they will go for something like the Nah. I don't know if they use. I don't know if they play things like Nah in China, but we do have a Renekton ban, so maybe even Nah or Kennen this early in draft wouldn't be too bad. Um, the LeBlanc comes out though, okay. So, oh, actually, Scout does play a lot of LeBlanc, so we'll see what he does. That uh, that drink promotion right there though, like, what's enough to love, you know? So, uh, response here, Aphelios is banned, um, we probably get response to the virus, um, I, I mean something like Jinx would be great, but I don't think it's going to be taken. Uh, the Trundle support lock, mm, okay, so maybe they play all off top, but I don't actually know, I haven't, I've only reviewed one LNG game. So, we will see, uh, we do get the Ash come through though, obviously Ash virus is quite a common matchup, and we will probably see... Um, a potential, I mean, even something like a cannon here, and um, won't do too bad into Olaf. Obviously, it's a bit risky at six when he gets his ultimate and cannon can't stun him anymore. But cannon just never really fights. Oh, actually, we love to see it. So, Lissandra, I've said this in multiple games before, is one of the biggest counters to LeBlanc because whenever you W in, Lissandra just instantly W or, or Qs you back, and it does a ridiculous amount. So. Uh, so yeah, so so far LNG actually very very solid draft now the Trundle is kind of given away as a support pick here though Which I don't like entirely, but maybe um, it is in the jungle um, It still has that flexibility because they haven't chosen their support yet, so we'll see uh, Olaf might be top lane though which, you know, all off top isn't as great. We do see the Viego go over for the side of EDG. Now, GG has been the, uh, was the kind of weak factor um, in a lot of the EDG games, um, I'd say. And it's literally just scout blowing people up. So, we'll see, we'll see. EDG are very, very good though. So, we'll see what they decide to do. So, in terms of bans, we get the Ash ban just because... It's a very good pick into the virus, and they chose to prioritize the Lissandra instead. We'll probably see another ADC band that can, you know, do stuff into um, the virus. Maybe an Ezreal band here, just because it has the range that, you know, he can still farm from a much safer angle. And it's also a little bit harder for uh, LeBlanc to get on top of him. So we do actually see the Callista band. That's completely fine. We'll probably see a... Um, we won't see a Leona ban. The Braun ban is better here because Trundle already counters Leona. So if they choose to R4 Leona here, they're basically all R5. Then it's already into a counter matchup, and then they could just force that into support and take a good jungler for Tarzan. We do see the Thresh come out. I really like Thresh um, as a champion, um, and you know it just gives that kind of added safety that if Trundle chooses to prioritize focusing the ADC then Thresh will just run safety and throw a lantern down so I mean pretty good draft from both sides here I think uh, it's going to be very telling what LNG decide to do here because this is where they break their flex and kind of reveal what they're um, looking for in the game so the Ezreal comes through like I said I think it should have been a ban um, the only problem is here though, do they have enough AD damage? I think they need to swap Trundle into support, oh, oh there we go. So I was going to say Trundle support and Olaf into lane and then uh, into jungle and then just pick a really big lane bully. Surprise Jace made it through this far without being uh, taken but I think he's probably the answer considering they do need a lot of AD. Jace can go lethality, they are looking for this huge mid game spike though. Um, you know, EDG don't really have huge scaling options though, but Aurelia top would be pretty, pretty kind of explosive. 
considering she can have a okay time into um, the Jace uh, if Theoralia plays it properly. Now, really, it is very difficult to play though, so we will see what comes out of that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of draft, who do I prefer? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think I do prefer EDG's draft here. I mean, I think Tarzan's got what he wants, and they do have a Jace top, but I still think maybe they're lacking a little bit of AD damage, to be honest. Um, whereas the opposite side aren't at all. Plus, I think it's going to be very difficult if Scout does get ahead on this pick for Jace and Lissandra to really do anything. Now, Lissandra is a counter pick too. Um, LeBlanc so we sh you know shouldn't see um, him pop off too hard but I mean we'll we'll see it is Scout at the end of the day so um, and Scout is still considered one of the best mid laners in the world in my opinion So in terms of runes, uh, Jace Gathering Storm, we love to see it. Gathering Storm fan club, yes sir. So again, out of the Lissandra as well, Gathering Storm, lovely to see. I feel like this is one of the strongest runes in um, <coughs> in the sorcery tree, to be honest. Now, nothing else too crazy. Uh, we're not seeing any kind of like carrier level, level summoner spells, but... Rundle just sitting back here just so that you can spot them if they do walk through. Now, this is a much safer spot to hold rather than holding the tribush because there's so many ways that they can get inside the tribush um, in order to shut you out. So, we'll see what goes on. Guarantee worlds if LNG win. Okay, I, I don't think LNG are ever going to win this, to be honest. But look at that record. All for the side of EDG, 12 to 4. We already see aggression coming out of Scout, though, manages to get his E down before Lissandra can do anything. So, I mean, this is actually pretty big because Scout is playing an assassin. So, he has a much easier time actually doing things. Now, he did take his E first for that trade, which means, you know, he doesn't have his W, but he did manage to proc a potion out of the Lissandra, which he still has two available. We have just seen him pop a corrupting. Is he going to look to maybe do something in this mid lane? I don't think so. Bot lane right now, you know, pretty, pretty casual. Not really much is going to happen in this lane, to be honest. We are probably just going to see Thresh get to his Swifties or Mobies um, and then just roam. Okay, so GG wasn't actually spotted here. Scout jumps in, gets a chain. Lissandra does just flash out though, but I mean, that's a flash advantage for the side of EDG in the mid lane now. Scout is very, very low though, so I would have really liked to see GG help him push this wave in. Because now Lissandra has the opportunity to freeze this uh, lane. So, uh... LNG versus EDG. Okay, so. So let's just quickly set up our spreadsheet. So I think that was actually a really, really big mistake from the side of EDG. Okay, so Scout did uh, use his TP to come and push this in. Now the wave is in a good position for him so that he can, it will come back into him now. So, you know, he will be able to farm this a little bit safer or potentially uh, get some pressure off. Lissandra choosing to reset on that slow push. Maybe we see a TP back into mid or maybe she's just going to walk, to be honest, since LeBlanc also isn't there. Now, there is a big slow push in mid lane, but look at top lane. There's a massive wave under this towel. We see a TP coming in from LeBlanc here. Is she going to be able to do anything? Okay, so they complete. I don't know what Flandre was doing. He does manage to get out, but he is going to die instantly to Tarzan under the tower. Tarzan will drop for it though. So one for one on a three man dive when TP was used. And Scout is now going to pick up AL2. Maybe he just goes for Icon. 
That's completely fine as well, but this was this was terrible from the side of LNG. Very, very messy, which I mean EDG are currently the favourites for the world championship to be honest, so very very messy to see now here this is crazy we've got plays going on on top side and we're getting a 2v2 bot lane kill viper is very very good so here we see that dive the jace does a massive amount of damage really it does use some cues on the minions and then flashes away but it's really not enough tarzan does die from it though because they commit so much to this dive and as we can see here scout just comes cleans up icon he could have kept going for ale but there's no point risking it when you can just kill icon you don't really want to run that risk of them getting away and that's his lane opponent as well so that's a gold advantage that he gets over his lane opponent now so that's actually really good if he would have got out and managed to come and do something with this wave it wouldn't have been as good scout does manage to get the e and you know he is using his w very short so he's not using his w for damage he's just using it same range to e and this is probably how he's going to play out this matchup just because you know it is a big counter but leblanc is one of them champions that has so much kind of versatility to her kit she can even win the the bad matchup sometimes if you're good enough on her so gg clearing away this ward in the river and Mako is actually here ready for a 3v2 on mid lane. So I like to see this EDG kind of um, mid support jungle. I, I like to see this kind of mid support jungle trio that EDG are bringing. And this is kind of heavily meta right now. Where if your support isn't kind of moving, um, you do lose a lot of pressure. Now, mid lane is kind of like the, the central point of the map. So. As soon as you start kind of losing um, that mid lane um, pressure, that's when things get uh, a little bit kind of rougher on the edges because get mid is basically the gateway um, into the jungle. LNG has never beat EDG. I mean, there's not many teams that have beat EDG clearly, but they are incredibly talented with this kind of uh, core of Scout and Viper and Mako. Um, it's just a case of making sure that Flandre and GG don't completely grief these games which from the previous games we did watch uh you know against we um it, it was very much often that mid and adc would pop off whereas um the top side and everybody else would kind of int a little bit so here we see a really good dive on bot lane though just very very clean all round vago had his ult to get out as well hopefully we get to see a replay of that but pretty pretty clean all around this rotation into the bot lane very very good from the side of edg just gonna get this dive off so this is one of the things to thresh as well though is his uh his autos are very weird so we see the thresh lantern in gg to get in there and instantly get that reset and then the leblanc gets a chains on the tarzan virus is just queuing from range and then gg manages to get in i don't think he needed to flash there to be honest i think he should have just used his ultimate to get out but I guess he felt the need to flash. So. So, I mean, that throw of five minutes for the side of LNG is terrible, though. Like, Tarzan is now one and two. He's really not having the best showing. And the problem is here, he has to really heavily play around this top side because Ezreal doesn't output anywhere near as much damage as other ADCs. He's not really that late game threat. Now, he does do quite a lot of damage, but he really isn't that kind of late game threat. And if he gets jumped on by, say, the um viego and then the aurelia follows up then it's very hard for him to do anything one of the biggest things with ezreal is if he's trying to avoid one kind of cc or one person in particular he's extremely powerful but if you've got multiple people that can jump on him and you know follow him through his e then it becomes much much harder ale does back away from this kill because he does see flandre is uh, moved so They are aware of what's happening, but I just feel like all round they're just hemorrhaging gold already. This early game play from EDG is very, very good.
And this is honestly one of the reasons why I think EDG is going to do so well in Worlds this season because this very aggressive early playstyle is if you can't keep up with that momentum and that pressure, they're just going to roll you over. Now, LNG, I think, is a good team. They are in play-ins in Group A, um, but they're also against Hanwha Life. Now, I do think LNG are a bit more well-rounded than Hanwha Life. Hanwha Life are literally just Chovy versus Nine, but... So I do think they're a lot more well-rounded, but overall, uh, I do think um, they will make it out of planes and into groups, and I think then they end up in Group D, which would be against, um, who's in Group D again? Uh, I can't remember. It's, let me check my LinkedIn. So I, I remember it being LNG would go into um, this group. We have, uh, oh, so Group D, Mad Lions, Gen G, Team Liquid. So I think in LNG have got a very easy group as well in comparison to um, others. So, I mean, we will see where that goes, but I, I think LNG are favorites in play-ins for sure. Even though, you never know, China plays a very methodical and fundamental kind of game. Like, they play around team fighting and objective control and making sure they always win a fight as five. Now, when you're playing against some of the kind of teams like Unicorns of Love in that group stage, it's going to be very, very difficult in order to um, avoid the amount of cheese that they're going to bring. Like, like uh, UOL have been known for many crazy things in the past. TF Jungle, Oriana Bot, like... They're very sporadic now. Okay, so Jace instantly eased the Aurelia back, so you know she can't continue that. She did have four stacks here, so um, if he didn't use that knockback there, then maybe she would have actually just popped her ult and potentially killed him. So there's a huge amount of um, kill potential now in this top lane due to the fact that Aurelia is so oppressive and she is ahead as well by quite a quite a decent amount to be honest. That's easy about about four. 400 gold in advantage so we'll we'll see um how this goes botlin are pushing getting another snow slow push and we can see the viego is moving instantly so they are going to potentially look for this bot dive mako does get spotted on a ward and gg also so but lng stay in botlin herald gets popped and they don't decide to commit so it is a little bit rough to see, but what they're going to do now is they're just going to give this gold over um, to Viper and JJ Mako leaving the tower, which is really good to see. He understands um, to leave it. GG getting caught by Tarzan, though, instantly ults out so he doesn't even get knocked up by the... Oh, that Thresh hook was absolutely terrible. So they play a very conserved game, 100%. Like, I think there, what they could have done is literally just walked up as the Herald was dropping, especially Viego, and just, he's not going to get 2v1 by an Ezreal and a Trundle. So, there, he should have just uh, walked up and pincered them, and they would have actually got two kills there as well. Now, I mean, they do already have such a huge lead. Mako just instantly flashes away. He doesn't have Hex Flash either, so, I mean... It was a complete waste of flash, but at least he committed to it. So we do see this uh, 400 gold lead in this top lane, roughly the same amount we predicted. We've got 200 in the jungle. Um, in mid lane, we have a 700 gold lead. And in bot lane, we have a 1500, uh, 14, 1500 gold lead for the virus. So he's going to be doing a ridiculous amount of damage right now. Even Thresh is about 500 gold advantage at the moment. So... We're going to see a lot of kind of pressure coming into um, this mid game from the side of EDG. They already have a substantial lead of 13 minutes. Already 3k up against LNG, which for, for context, LNG, uh, you know, played okay, to be honest. I mean, they did lose, uh, I think it was 3-0 to FPX, but um, in their game versus RNG, they actually played okay. Um, overall which I'm fairly certain uh, 
they they did lose against RNG actually it was 2-1 but RNG are um, the current world best team in terms of um, international showings they did actually beat Dam one in um, in MSI and this is mainly because RNG play very much around top side and Dam one's top side is a little bit weaker their top and support are definitely their weak points can really need resources in order to get stuff done so that'll be interesting to see I think this will be one of the interesting things about worlds actually is the fact that um, the play styles of certain teams like for example Team Liquid um, I'm very interested to see how they do because a lot of these teams like RNG are very top heavy um, and TL are very much based around Alfari getting resources as well so interesting to see how like the number one NA representative actually does against actually no number two re uh, representative sorry does actually against um, teams like RNG who can punish them massively but obviously that would rely on them getting out of groups which I mean is a possibility for them but I think if LNG goes in that group then maybe they're gonna be in a bit of trouble in actually getting out I think they can especially considering Flandre isn't the the kind of star of the show but EDG do have uh, sorry not um, Flandre who am I on about um, Ale <coughs> like I haven't seen anything crazy from Ale he did play a Jax game which was insane he played it so well but every other game I saw him play he kind of inted I mean he literally into three games on Renekton against FPX and was one of the main kind of losing points um, <clears throat> and then he also inted on Viego and Renekton against uh, RNG so you know it, it's not looking good for that top lane to be honest now So, EDG going to look to force Herald. I mean, they can. They have nearly 5,000 gold lead. Which, at 15 minutes, means that the chances are this game's already over. Now, if we look at the builds a little bit, well, there's not really much going on. I don't think LNG are ever going to be in a position to contest this. Or oh, are they going to? No. They, they, they just can't. They can't get there quick enough. So, this guy actually does a lot for that team. So maybe it was just some bad series that I watched, but his damage percentage is huge. So if we look at the builds now, Jace is on his Eclipse and he's going into his uh, Mana Moon now. Okay, if they would stop with the advertisements, that would be amazing. Okay, so Aurelia has picked up a Gold Drinker now. She's gone for more of a Gold Drinker now. Uh, I mean, Gold Drinker isn't too bad here. If the Lissandra is in range, just because obviously Lissandra is a ranged champion, but her E will put it in range, especially with her ult as well. Um, but they do have Jace, uh, Olaf, and Trundle. Now, the thing is, Jace can use his acceleration gate to just Q from such a long range that it's a little bit risky um, going the Gordrinker here, I think. But, I mean, it still will come in useful and still a good item, especially it's a really, really powerful uh, mythic. Now, we see the virus has got the dust blade, which again I don't really agree with too much, but it's not too bad. What patch is this on? I don't actually know what patch this is on. Actually, I think it's eleven point oh, it's eleven point fifteen, so it's going back a little bit further. But we see uh, Viego also has his Sundra at this point. Uh, LeBlanc has double pen, which you can see the effects of double pen here completely one shot the um, Lissandra's HP bar now Lissandra did trade back HP but it's really not enough there she's gonna reset though whereas LeBlanc isn't which I mean is okay she's still got a corrupting pot in her inventory so that's fine so we do actually see a very interesting build come out of Thresh so he's uh, gone swifty boots straight to a Negatron so I guess let's try and get rid of a lot of the damage from, I mean, Trundle does magic damage with his ultimate, uh, Lissandra does a lot of magic damage, Ezreal does do quite a bit too, um, especially in his W, his W ult does a huge amount of magic damage. Um, so maybe, oh, we do see a pick from Flandre onto Ale, he does manage to get his ult off and he's just going to run him down, flashes over to chase after him even further, but is he going to get in range? He is, and now he's probably going to get this bottom tower as well for another 600 gold, so... We see about a thousand gold um, go over to Flandre in this situation, so we're very interested to see what he actually does with this. 
Uh, we do see um, Viego and Thresh were actually in this bottom side of the jungle warding up for him ready. So you really like to see this actually. So it's, it's extremely uh, clean gameplay from them here, to be honest. So here we actually see the pro view, so she actually gets it invisibly with the um, sweeper. That's why sweeper is very good, because it spots people even over walls. The camera control is actually awful though from the side of Flandre, but he still manages to pick up this kill, so I guess it doesn't really matter that much. So Scout does sort of get caught in top lane, but he's got double uh, distortion, so it's actually very, very hard to catch um, this LeBlanc now. Uh, they do manage to get this tower for it. Obviously, it's only a tier one, tier one tower, so it's not, you know, massive priority. I mean, it is gonna bring them back a little bit of gold, but it's not gonna be huge. Now, Israel skipping on his boots to finish his man of moon. It's actually a very smart call because at this point, his boots are not gonna help him. He needs more damage since his virus is so far ahead of him right now. So it's actually a good call to kind of wait on boots. Um, it's quite nice to see actually. Tarzan obviously he's doing that as well, but he's got magical footwear, so it isn't as applicable, especially considering you only get 10 um, less movement speed than tier two boots due to magical footwear anyway. So it's not that huge. Uh, we do see the Mikhail's come through instantly for the Thresh though. <clears throat> this, uh, you know, could potentially um, change fights around. I'm very intrigued to see how he's gonna actually use this though. Okay, so Scout looking for some bursts on Tarzan, and he can get it. Now, the thing is, Tarzan has no MR, so Scout can literally do half his HP just instantly due to the fact that he has his Ludens and Sorches. It's going to be even more when he picks up uh, what I think is going into Azonias. I would have preferred to see him just get the Void Staff here, though, uh, just so that he gets even more damage, because right now he needs to just look to, well, kind of just snowball the game. So it seems a bit pointless him going into Zonya's this early. I mean, it is a defensive item, and he is doing enough damage to warrant a defensive item. So it's not all bad, but we will see. LNG just looking to try and get some picks. Maybe they managed to pick Flandre, but he's level 15 right now. They're literally walking into their death. He will 1v2 them at this point. He's incredibly strong. LeBlanc actually went into a Banshees. I feel like there's not as much from the enemy team that you are really looking to get rid of. Now, one of the things is Lissandra E will actually proc her Banshees anyway, and then she'll just instantly go to it and get the W. Now, obviously, LeBlanc can jump out, and it's very hard to get on top of her, but... Oh, but the Lissandra's build is unbelievably grief. Going Morellos as a champion, that, you know... She doesn't really want to, she, she isn't going to be in range to proc it on multiple people a lot, but as we can see here, just the instant burst, Scout is getting to that point where he could almost 100-0 someone. Now, obviously, I think if he had Void Staff here instead of Banshees, he would have just killed her, so very unfortunate to see, especially considering due to his mythic item, um, his uh, Void Staff would also give 5 uh, magic penetration, which is super valuable, especially when it's already giving such a large amount of um, MR reduction as well, so.
mean, it is year at this point, still 5k gold lead. Now, this is one of the good things, though. One of the ways that you can tell between a really good team and a bad team is what they decide to do with their lead. Now, what you'll see a lot of the times is bad teams uh, will actually, they'll get an early lead. And what they'll do is they'll try and force that early lead as much as possible. Now, obviously, this isn't feasible and this is not a good strategy to use because unless you have an early game team like you have things like Lee Sin and Callista and these early game picks uh, then like Lucian mid maybe then you're going to be in a position where um, you have to force off early plays and then champions being early game um, dominant are champions that can push that early lead now when you look at champions like Varus, LeBlanc, Viego uh, I guess even Aurelia at some to some degree the biggest point of which they are strong is in their mid game that's when they're kind of the most op so what they've actually managed to do here is they've got such a huge lead um, in the early game and then they've just carried that lead making sure they just kind of strangle lng out of all the resources possible while this goes on now they are gonna look to just go for this dragon now LNG looking to try and do something. Tarzan does have ultimate available, so they can't really engage onto that. But Scout looking to try and get some kind of damage down here. Ezreal ult come in. It does pop Scout's Banshee, so it doesn't actually damage anybody. And Flandre and GG are just going to quickly take this dragon down. LNG are going to try and get pressure in mid from it, but you know, Maker, Scout, and Viper are just instantly moving. Even if they do get this tower, it isn't the end of the world. They might potentially get a really big fight. They are split, but Flandre is huge. So the thresh lantern comes out and actually saves them very heavily the really really good virus to get nearly everybody and then scout just cleans up even though flandre did go very very aggressive there it was completely fine due to the fact that thresh has his lantern available so i mean pretty good fight from edg i mean do i think they won that fight due to the fact they have such a big gold advantage yes but does that really matter no not really now flandre right now was on his third item at 27 minutes so he is incredibly powerful right now um, we also see a second item nearly finished out of jungle and that stopwatch is available um, Scout is building into a Rabadon so now one of the reasons why this is pretty good is because needlessly large again that 60 AP for one item slot is very very valuable now building a second one is very painful but it gives so much when you finish that Rabadon that since he's so big it's really good to go for especially when he's playing leblanc a champion that needs to blow people up now this is the replay of the fight we saw it was pretty much just flandre burning a lot of their kind of cooldowns and then got out with the fresh lantern and then scout managed to just clean up the kills so scout is huge at this point he does actually have his second um, needlessly large rod which means he just needs to farm for a thousand gold now so as long as they slow the game down um and he gets about 50 cs then He's going to have that uh, Rabadon, so we're just waiting for that at this point. He might even look to take camps. He's uh, not actually. So they're probably going to look to get Baron control now. They're, they don't need to force Baron yet, but they do want to get control of the pit. Just because this is going to incentivize LNG to try and kind of walk up and clear the vision out and try and get control of for themselves. And if they don't do that, then EDG are just going to rush the Baron whenever they see anybody elsewhere. So... Tarzan does manage to get the um, Scuttle Crab. We also see though that Jace is on his three Lethality items. Now this is partly because Lethality items are a lot cheaper than um, Bruiser items. But, you know, Bruiser items do do a lot. Jace is kind of one of them champs. He's looking to just keep EQing over and over and over. And that's kind of how he wants to play this game. We see Scout does a massive amount of damage on Wandy. He doesn't manage to get that E off, though, to proc it. Otherwise, he would have almost killed him. He wouldn't have been able to kill fully. Um, but he's just looking for this, uh, this, this 1,100 gold so that he can finish his Rabadons. And he's actually going to be a complete monster. So we do see him get some poke on tiles on there. Q and then detonate the mark with E. Um, just to get as much damage as possible and that's kind of how you want to play LeBlanc you just want to jump in get a mark on somebody detonate it with another ability and then just get out so this has kind of always been the same for LeBlanc even in the days where a Q had silence where you W in you double Q and then get out because it silence and can do much so Flandre is really looking for a fight here let's see what he can do Trundle World does come down though which is really good it means he can re-engage now and this is 
I mean, this should be pretty good for the side of EDG if they just play it way slower, but it's actually going to look like LNG get a lot. Now, there is a lot of gold on the side of EDG in their pouches, so they do need to look to reset and spend that gold before forcing things like this, but Flandre kind of, kind of went a bit too ham there, to be honest, considering um, Trundle ult was actually on him as well, I'm fairly certain, so... Scout completely fine. Mako is sat there with Lantern anyway. But Scout, let's see what he can do. 1v4. Probably not that much, to be honest, but he can at least scare them away from the Baron. And he can actually clear their vision now, considering, you know, we can just get behind. Now, that's pretty bad from the side of Ale, though, because if he would have just hit the Baron, he would have at least got some damage onto him from the Baron being aggressive on him. But EDG are not looking for the Baron at this point. They're just looking for this last dragon, which Mountain... That's going to give them a total of 18% additional bonus armor and magic resist, which we do see a lot of armor and magic resist items coming in for the side of EDG. So this provides a massive amount of value from these dragons. So they're probably just going to look to get vision control and then, oh, okay, GG, Mako, communication issues. Like, you don't expect to see double pings in one brush at this kind of level of play. It's very, very suspicious. Like, they're, they're just not communicating enough. Or, I mean, that's kind of a, that's kind of simple, you know? That's kind of a straightforward thing. Like, you want to just basically ping the brushes that you're, you're going to ping as you go in. Now, they are looking for this dragon. Now, I mean, EDG could always give this dragon over, but there's no reason to. It gives too much value. Um, to the side of LNG, which will mean that LeBlanc's game, like kind of game, is much harder if they manage to get this dragon. So this could be a potential for LNG to bring it back. But Varus does have ultimate available, and Flandre does also. We see the Varus ult come in into the Threshuck, instantly kills the Trundle Scout in the backline, killing Icon very, 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 very easily. To be honest, and now this just guarantees him the dragon. Now Olaf is a champion that can always steal objective if he has flash. But he just really didn't want to jump in for that because if he does, they give away the Baron. Now, they are just going to look to get priority inside the mid lane and then just go and Baron dance for a bit. They do have Mountain Soul at this point. So that nice big, you know, three to 400 shield is going to, you know, come in quite often now. And, you know, this poke from Jace means a lot less um, considering these shields. So, Varus with a huge shield right now. Scout is getting prior in the mid lane, but Tarzan does have his flash available, so they really don't want to go for this dragon. Varus does with his ultimate, uh, Baron, sorry, so they probably want to start backing away from this a little bit. They know that Tarzan is there, so they do jump on Ale, and even though he does get a kill on the Thresh, it doesn't really matter that much. He gets instantly dead. Now, Scout does need to go and zone Tarzan away right now, especially pop this Blast Cone, so and this is very, very risky. I can't believe they... they <clears throat> They allowed the 50-50, it's crazy. So still, 50-50 in that is uh, that's really not too good. Now, they really need to look to get rid of Scouts of Blank now. It's it's known to be kind of a, a big um, pick for him. Hey, how's it going, Glacier? How's it going, man? How's your day? So we see the replay from here, as we can see Scout just manages to pick Icon on this ward, just instantly kills him pretty much. He does manage to get out with his W but you know LeBlanc has a distortion available and that just instantly kills her and then as we can see this Baron fight, Varus ult does miss just before this uh, replay comes through but we can see Mako does give his life, he flashes over but that does actually manage to kill um, the Jace and now obviously we have Tarzan in the back just just really uh, trying to do what he can and he does miss his smite here he needs to get that E smite off and kind of combine his true damage on his E with his smite and then we can see he just instantly dies and it just divulges your day's been great, love to hear it my dude enjoying the videos on YouTube oh yeah, not many people are watching them but there is a lot of stuff on there but I appreciate that man, thank you It's going to be a fun world, that's for sure. I need to learn how to edit just so that I can put my uh, continue upload into YouTube. But I think I know what to do. I think I nailed it today. So we shall see.
because I need to get my cam off a live viewing and put it on top of the games. Otherwise, why would people want to watch the YouTube, you know? But it would see EDG is going to slowly close this game out. About an 8,000 gold lead right now. They're huge. I mean, and the thing is, so this is the thing with EDG. It's kind of like they've stacked this gold lead up over time. They've kind of, they had 5k gold lead and they just never lost it. They just kept it like permanently. So I think the way you beat EDG is you match their aggression in the early game. Now, it's going to be very, very difficult to do. And there's a lot of teams that, you know, aren't as hot in the early game. Um, who is in EDG's group actually? So EDG is group B, um, which means they also have a hundred thieves and T1. Now T1 is a team that if they get a massive lead in the early game, or even if they just get a lead in the early game, they really need to know how to run with it. But the problem most of the time with T1 is the fact they don't get that early lead, and then they really struggle by doing very sloppy gameplay so there's a huge kind of uh, gameplay difference between edg and t1 for example but then 100 thieves we haven't really reviewed 100 thieves games but they're a very stacked roster to be honest so you know maybe something happens there maybe not thresh lantern is just completely broken they get out and now all they need to do is just five man this bot lane and get triple in hit so it's gonna be interesting How did you uh, how did you find the stream by the way, Glacier? If you don't mind me asking. Just curious. I'm thinking about actually putting it on the YouTube video as well. Like in the description maybe. So, I mean all round this is a fairly convincing game. I mean, LeBlanc is now on her four items, which means she's having... Tw she's got literally 20 magic pen um, purely from a mythic bonus, which is huge. On top of the boots, that puts her to 38. So that's already breaking the entirety of base MR by a considerable amount. Only Talon actually has more. Um, and then on top of that, she's got Void Staff too, so that's reducing by a percentage as well before the penetration takes place, so... Oh, you had a coaching session. Oh, my bad. Sorry, man. A year ago is quite a while, I've got to admit. Okay, so Varus ult does go wide again. That's unfortunate. Viper has missed some. Thresh does get a nice hook, but it doesn't really do much. LeBlanc is instantly just one shot. Like, what is she doing? Like... LeBlanc has completely griefed this game. Completely griefed this game. Oh, nice, man. I, I did see um, there's, a, there's a few views racking up on the YouTube videos now, thankfully. Obviously, the only thing right now is obviously a lot of people don't really have the time to be watching over all of these playoff games, um, even if it is me kind of discussing them. Um, so... But hopefully that changes around worlds a little bit more. So EDG, you know, just completely whitewashed. Like, there wasn't even much point in kind of narrating what was happening in that team fight because it's just pure damage. Now, the 11k gold advantage, you know, that's pretty substantial. And we can see why this team came second. I wonder who came first. I presume it was FPX, but overall, you know, pretty pretty solid game so let's end the youtube video there and go on to game number two